Hey everyone, it's Norm Ferrar, aka The Beard Guy here, and welcome to another Lunch with Norm, The Rise of the Micro Brands. Lunch with Norm. Lunch with Norm. Lunch with Norm. Okay, so for today's episode, we are going to be talking about building up your influencer and brand ambassador network. Um, we're going to be having a million dollar seller who's been an instructor for amazing.com. He actually started around um, uh, ASM5. I think that's what his first course was. And uh, he's talked at many events. That's how I got to know him. Uh, he's got an upcoming webinar uh, that he's going to be uh producing and uh, that I think that's in the next month. He's also my partner in the chat agency. Uh, his name is Paul Barron. I think a lot of you listening today will probably know him. He's a great guy and uh, he gets incredible results. So um, anyways, Kelsey, where are you? Hello. Hey, how are you doing? I'm doing fine. How are you? I didn't hey, screw up today. Bad. That's good. I wasn't going to mention it's a comeback. It, but, uh, it's a comeback. It's a comeback. I did Everyone not screw up my intro. <laughs> they call At you. The I, knew, I remember kid. my name today, which is good. You know, I, I, I it seems like, uh, you know, every year I'm starting to hide my own Easter eggs. So, <laughs> okay. Right. We got a few people here. Yeah, uh, welcome Manny, everyone. Simon, Marsha, Rad, Mark, Dr. Cause, Tony Vu. I don't know who the Facebook user is, but welcome. Victor, thank you for the message just before we got on. We're going to try to fix that little glitch. Steven, Jonathan. Oh, him. another welcome Jonathan. Everyone. Welcome, everybody. I uh, really appreciate you joining us today. Uh, Kelsey, what is everybody supposed to do? All right. So if you're new to the show, if you're watching right now, smash those like buttons. Uh, oh God, if you're right. watching from YouTube, subscribe and hit that little red button and uh, ring the bell that we really appreciate it. It gets you all the content um, of us in front of your faces. Uh, if you have any notification areas, you can pr um, press a little button um, and it lets you know when we go live. Uh, so yeah, ringing the bell is super important, uh, especially on Facebook for our face or, or especially on YouTube for our YouTube viewers. Um, it helps whenever we go live, you'll get like a little banner. Oh, let's see what else. We have our Facebook contest yep. happening. Um, we are giving away a pair of AirPod, AirPod Pros. Uh, I'll put the link in the description area. Whew, it's been a rough one. <laughs> Is it your but, turn uh, to screw up? Because I think so. uh, I'm just sitting I'm back. Feeling, I'm chilling today. You're chilling. Uh, yeah. But uh, we also have a, an exclusive Lunch with Norm Facebook group contest happening in the Facebook group only. That's your chance to win uh, an hour consultation with Norm and I. Um, so we got lots Separately. of stuff going on. Welcome, everyone. How is everyone doing? How is your business doing? Let us know any updates. Is there anything going on? Um, put it over in the comments section. We'd love to hear. Yeah, sure. if you have any questions, let's engage. So let's get started. So comments, if you have any, just throw them in the, or questions, throw them in the comments section. If we don't get to it today, we will definitely answer it in our uh, Facebook group. Okay, so sit back, relax, grab that cup of coffee. Where the heck are you? There's the man, the myth, the legend, Paul Barron. The myth and the legend. Yes. Uh, you know what? I forgot to mention two things. You are the founder of uh, Chatbot U, right? Oh, uh, yeah. Chat Marketing University. Yeah, that's pretty close. It was Messenger Bot University when we first started in 2018. That's where we met. Um, yep. That was where we met. So you and I, I think, did you also speak at SellerCon 2018? I think you did. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. So you and I both spoke at SellerCon 2018. That was my first really big event. Everything up until that point, I had done like small local events. And um, I mean, I used to do, I used to actually lead worship at my church. So be up on stage playing guitar and singing um, was what I was normally used to. So being in front of people was never that big. But oh, yeah, I think two or three, two or three thousand people. Yeah, that was huge. That was my, that was my first real big boy event. Yeah. You know, I, I had to take, I, I even, for the most part, I had to take stage fright pills. Did you get what they're polypropylene or something like that? I don't know. It's like antifreeze. I don't know. Oh, man. But, <laughs> I was, but anyways, I, it helps out. I was so nervous. And I, I listened to the speech. So I practiced that speech. I hired a speaking coach 
first yep. and foremost. I hired a speaking coach, practiced that speech like 20 times, top to bottom. I knew it. Like I knew it. And uh, I had a cold during the event. And so, you know, like the little mic that they have, it feels like they inserted it into my nostril. It did. I, I, did, I didn't I, tell you. When I listen that they did, they put it up there. Yeah. My nose is big enough. They could you could hide a couple mics up there, uh, one on each side. And no, I felt like I was like literally breathing like 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 Darth Vader. Anyway, yeah. Silicon 2018. Oh, awesome. Victor, do you remember even what we talked about? That's I would I feel like giving you a prize. Nervousness, that's good. <laughs> yeah, that it, it was it was it was challenging. Anyway, so 2018 was fun. Um, but then we got invited, both Norm and I got invited to speak at a mastermind in the summer that amazing put on. And that was a, that was a high ticket event. And that was where he and I actually got to connect more because, you know, when you're at these big massive events, especially since it was my first time, I was a little starstruck and trying to figure everything out still. I think I talked to you maybe a little bit yeah, we at, talked the, a bit, at, sure. the, at the seller, at the seller con, but then we actually yeah. got to connect more in Austin. So yeah, for sure. Yeah, and then we've bumped into each other in a bunch of other events. And, you know, um, one of the things that really impressed me, and it, it is about today's show, is, you know, your knowledge of chatbots and automation. And, you know, after we got talking, you're talking about how you built this you know, very competitive seasonal uh, brand into like a, a million dollar, multi-million dollar uh, brand on Amazon. And I thought that was really cool. So we ended up talking a bit more and now um, we've got a, an agency together called the Chatbot Agency. I just wanna be fully transparent here. The chat, but, the chat agency. What did I say? The Chatbot. Oh my gosh. <laughs> yeah, I'm a brand guy, right? Yeah. So, yeah. Uh, all right, so let's talk about Let's talk about building up that uh, that brand network. And one of the things I, I think we should start off right off the bat, which a lot of people don't realize, um, with influencers, there's different types of influencers. So can you kind of just, before we get going here, just let's talk about the different types of influencers there are out there. Dude, how snark I could be snarky. There's influencers you want to work with and influencers you want to avoid. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so we we can start there. Um in, in a nutshell, influencers for those of us that have been hiding under rocks, an influencer is somebody on social media who has uh a fall a built up a following. They're they post all the time. Uh, I mean, you know, the, you know, the type of person, I mean, there's even, I don't know if you follow this account, but there's a, there's an account on Instagram. I called, I follow called influencers in the wild, which is hilarious by the way, Norm, yeah. have you heard of that account? No. Well, it's great. It's when people, it's like, you have like the normal influencers that are like scantily clad doing stupid dances in public. And it's people that see them doing this and they just record them from afar. And it's just hilarious because it looks good on social media. But then when you see like behind the scenes, what they're doing. It looks ridiculous. And influencers, uh, generally speaking, the ones that we want to work with, the ones that we focus on working with are ones that have less than 10,000 followers on Instagram. And, and specifically the reason for that is uh, influencers, when they, when they haven't, well, first of all, when they're not calling themselves influencers, their egos are less inflated. So there's that. Um, I mean, we have, we have people that email us all the time, Norm, there's one lady who sent us an email the other day. She had like 2000 followers and um, she wanted to send us like all of her pricing for taking our stuff to Roatan and taking photos of her kids in the beach. And I'm like, sweetheart, I, I appreciate the fact that you're doing this, but you're not an influencer. <laughs> not yet. And I'm not going to pay you, but we, and the, now I didn't say that to her. That's just what I think. But what we've done is when we get those requests, we have a system that we funnel them into. And we're just about to relaunch. Uh, we're doing a soft launch of the, of the new brand ambassador system that we put together at Bowen Bell Littles, which we're going to be you know, taking that sort of template into the chat agency as well. Um, we, we kind of use Bowen Bell Littles as a testing ground for everything. And that, that's you know, your we're, brand. Yeah. That's my they're, brand. They're swim yeah. diapers. Yep. Reusable swim diapers. So if you guys get a chance, uh, you can check us out on, on, um, on Amazon. I don't know if I can say this, but there is a review that I've been trying to get everybody to report because it's an FBA 
like Am- Amazon had shipped uh, shipped out a swim diaper with poop in it. It was poopy. It was disgusting. Um, and so I'm trying to get everybody to report that because I've tried everything else. So if you see that review, please click report. Um, now back to the actual regular scheduled programming. <laughs> <laughs> influencers the ones that you want to work with the ones that you don't want to work with you don't want to work with people that all they talk about is money okay Mm -hmm. you don't want to work with somebody who's going to just send you their rate card and pick your package and now the, the reason for this is that if you're going to pay an influencer for something you want their creativity you want them to come through with their creativity right um you don't want to just pay just for a spot like a hundred bucks for a post on Instagram. Okay. That's, I'm not going to pay. I'm not ever going to pay that, pay for that. Now I will pay a couple thousand dollars for a really well thought out creative campaign with somebody who has built, you know, hundreds of thousands of followers or even millions on Instagram. That's when I would pay, but where we see the most success, and this is the most attainable for everybody in the Amazon space is partnering with, with nano and micro influencers. So a nano influencer, again, is specific on Instagram, would be less than 10,000 people. Now, most of the time, people in the nano market wouldn't even consider themselves influencers. And those are the people that I want to work with. And the reason I want to work with them is that um, we can kind of take them under our wings and train them in our methods, like what we do, how we run the program, what we're looking for in posting, and that sort of thing. Oftentimes, uh, people that are in the nano market will work with us uh, just for an exchange of goods. You know, we, we trade them products. They give us product photography, photos, social media shout outs, that sort of stuff. And uh, we have a whole bunch of gamification on the back end, too, where we're incentivizing, um, you know, affiliate sales, like driving traffic, uh, whether, you know, unique promotions of specific products. Um, when we do a specific content push, like we need a a photo for Mother's Day or something along those lines. Let's say that we wanted a, a four generation photo where we got baby, mom, grandma, great grandma or something in the photo. We could do a push for that. And that's one of the great things about our program that we built is that we've got this community of influencers that we work with. Again, most of them don't think of themselves as influencers. Some of them um, are, you know, they do want to do more, more stuff in the influence world, um, you know, expand their reach and that sort of stuff. And, and for, for women like that, we help connect them with other brands. We train them on how to, how to, you know, get paying contracts and that sort of thing. So, um, now, I don't sorry, know if I, Paul, did, I, did, I, did I answer that question of how and who? Yeah. Yeah. Um, but one of the things that I just want to make sure that's really clear clear is that when you're talking about we uh you're talking about your brand we're like we're not plugging the agency we're talking about right, what no. paul's doing with his brand right, right. and Correct. building up his influencer network for uh, bowen bells which by the way i really love when people come on and say this is my brand this is what i'm doing yes i'm selling it on amazon and i'm not afraid to say it so you know that's right. kind of cool and that you know that's what i loved about uh talking to you too that you know hey look if people want to drive traffic to um, a, a search page, um, yeah, game on. You know, I'll, I'll compete with you all day long, right? Uh, and that's because you have a great, you know, a great network. By the way, something that you didn't say, uh, and we're going to get into, is that by using influencers and by um, by you know putting them onto Amazon posts and to get a lot of traffic, you've picked up a lot of Amazon Choice or bestseller badges, correct? Yeah, we do. We have the bestseller. Last I checked, we have the bestseller for our category. We have a bunch of Amazon choices. Um, yeah, so let me look. Let me look what we have now. It, just, um, it goes back and forth. I mean, we generally hold the bestseller badge for like nine months out of the year, maybe 10. Mm-hmm. It just depends on, you know, every now and again, a competitor will do like a big discount push, and so we'll lose it for a little bit. Or we go out of stock, and then we got to earn it back and that sort of stuff. But, yeah, for swim. Yeah. Swim diapers. Let me look. Oh, Arizona. by yeah, the way, yeah, uh, I forgot to mention, but Paul does have a giveaway today for everybody. Uh, Paul, why don't you just describe about the package? Uh, this is a five hundred dollar value, by the way. So, why don't you yeah. talk about it? So it's funny because I love sales. I love doing sales. In my head, sales is connecting people with a solution that they need and they're willing to pay for, not twisting their arms into something that they don't need and shouldn't pay for. Um, but I don't like 
like salesy webinars. So I generally don't sell on webinars. So this mm -hmm. is the only time that you're going to help hear this. Um, if you have questions and you ask and then I'll answer them. But yeah, so at the chat agency, we're doing this this for our, our clients. So Norm did say correctly, all the we's when I'm referencing we, I'm talking about our brand, say like, this is what we're doing. Every now and again, if I if I talk about what we're doing at the chat agency, I'll let you know, like we did this for a client partner or something. Okay. Um, but yeah, so generally at the chat agency, what we do is we run an audit before we, we onboard any client, any of our client partners. Um, and what we do in the audit is we look through their entire account setup, social media accounts, you know, how many followers, where do they have their social media accounts? You know, um, how many on each platform? You know, where do their ideal customers hang out? Is are, are they even a good fit for working with us? We audit their um, a couple of their top listings on Amazon, identify low hanging fruits that they can actually um, fix without even engaging with us. And so that's what we do prior to bringing on any clients, and we charge five hundred dollars for that. So um, we'll do it. I, sh I, I wasn't even thinking of putting a lead magnet together because that's what this is, is a lead magnet. Like if we're talking about marketing parlance, right? Um, I didn't even think about putting a form together. So we'll figure out a way to get it to you guys. We'll do some. Okay. Yeah, we, we do. Them. We'll just get the, your person's information at the end. So this is a full audit. It typically costs 500 bucks and uh, Paul's giving it away for free. And if you want that, it's just hashtag, we've changed this now, Wheel of Kelsey. So, and if you tag two people, you'll get an extra entry into the uh, giveaway. So, you know, this, this actually goes, it, it's, it, uh, it ties into one of my other questions <clears throat> is that you have to have how, well, how important is, uh, your complete optimized listing, social, everything to getting influencers. I can't hear you. It's vitally important. I accidentally muted myself. Um, yeah, it's vitally important because think about it from this. If if this standpoint, if you're working with somebody that is calling themselves an influencer, right? That's how they see themselves mm -hmm. or see themselves rather. They're not going to work with a no name person because everything they do on social media is designed to make themselves look better. Right. That's it. Right. So you have to think about it from that perspective. That means if you have no effort or thought or care put behind your brand, put behind your brand story, there's nothing unique about it, okay? Why would somebody partner with you? Why would they take a chance working with your brand? If your brand has 30 followers on Instagram, your packaging may look cool. Um, you know, your stuff might look cool, but looks, it doesn't matter because if they're gonna say, well, I'm gonna go with this, you know, this spatula over this spatula, this spatula has 30 followers. This spatula has, uh, it's a part of a brand library. They have a whole bunch of other products and there's 300,000. Why would somebody partner with you when you have nothing? Now I'm not saying, I, I don't wanna say this to scare people away. Why I'm saying this is because you need to think about Amazon as a channel. It is not the channel. It is not the end. It's not what you should be, like yes, you should, you wanna rank well and you want to sell on amazon but if that's your only goal then you're not going to you're not going to pay attention to what people are saying about you off amazon and what people say about you off amazon drive sales on amazon you know if if you are everywhere if you're si quite simply like our social media strategy and our pr strategy public relations it's very grassroots and it's we want to permeate everything we want to be everywhere we want every single one of our target customers to see from one of their friends that we are the best. So think of it as word of mouth advertising is on steroids. That's really what it is. And okay. you, you go to any traditional business, they're always gonna tell you word of mouth advertising is the best. The hardest thing about word of mouth is tracking, tracking ROI and, and putting a system behind word of mouth. And basically that's what we've done with the nano influencer framework. It's word of mouth advertising on steroids you know, we're, we're leveraging social media for word of mouth advertising. Yeah. We talk about, uh, value or authority quite a bit, uh, and getting the sale on Amazon and consistency, brand consistency. So you can definitely have a listing on Amazon and it could be, you know, an okay to good listing and you can go to paid, uh, influencer platforms like Thomason mm -hmm. or 
affluence and you can definitely go out and find influencers that'll get you you know uh an image or a video no problem but what we're talking about uh takes takes you to the next level and this yep. is getting free user generated content and what you're doing is you really just have to be consistent so we talk about brand story we talk about having that brand be consistent over your website over your social media if you if you're on one or two social media channels make sure the banners kind of look the same use the same colors try to use the same fonts and it doesn't take a lot of content like if if we're doing something and i'll say hey kelsey can you um you know create a social media account for xyz he'll spend a week you know coming up with a a bunch of posts the banner you know and throw it up there have five or six posts and that's good when the person at least comes over the influencer the nano influencer comes over they'll see that your website is consistent with your amazon page which is consistent mm -hmm. with your social media and guess what authority equals trust equals sales and in this case authority equals trust equals influencers so yep. you know um the other thing i i, I want to touch on paul because we haven't talked about the other influencers. There's really five or six different types. Mm -hmm. And can you kind of give us, you know, just in your opinion, the reasons why or why not uh, you would use these other types of influencers right up to celebrity? Yeah, yeah. So there's so up above nano, you have micro, then you have mid tier, uh, then you have mega. Uh, well, there's a whole bunch of tiers and they, they all have different defining like mega you know celebrities are all the way up at the top million five million plus yeah then you know then mega mid-tier micro um you know so on and so forth so that as you sort of go up this pyramid as it were you know celebrities on the top nanos on the bottom you know there's more nanos than there are celebrities you're going to find working with the influencers that it becomes more professional right because this is they that's what they do it's their profession so they have you know oftentimes when you know when we work with celebrities we talk to their agent and their lawyer which is a real pain in the ass because <laughs> you got to go through two people before you can talk to the one person and deals you're trying fall to talk through. to they all the time yeah i mean we we had a we had a deal go th went through with drew with lauren and drew holiday back in 28 20 I think it was 2018, 2017, 2018. I can't remember. Um, Lauren is Lauren and Drew are in the news now for um, they started a, a fund for black owned businesses. Um, she is a former U S women's national soccer team player. She won two, two golds, um, you know, a bunch of medals, all this stuff. Drew plays NBA. There's an amazing point guard, really, really great guy. So we partnered with them, had to do, you know, started with their agent and we got their lawyer involved and that ended up going through. We had a uh, Michael Phelps agent reach out to us a year and a half ago. So they actually emailed us and that ended up falling through just because of, I think, uh, timing was one, was one issue. They wanted to do something for the Olympics last year, actually at 2020, which got postponed. They, they got in contact with us a little bit too late for us to spin that up. Um, and then the other thing was I was trying to take an, an, a charity angle where we donated more to his charity the Phelps foundation and agents don't make money if you donate to charities. So she wanted to make money. That's my assumption. I think that if we could have gotten Nicole and Michael on the phone, Nicole's his, his wife, if we could have gotten them on the phone, if I could have gotten Nicole on the phone, if Rochelle and Nicole could have talked, we could have sealed the deal. Yeah. Um, so there's, I mean, there's, there's a lot more red tape that you got to deal with. There's a lot more expense, you know, partnering with somebody like Phelps, I would expect to pay upwards of, Twenty to fifty thousand dollars, or something. I don't even know. Um, I'm assuming that's how much we would pay. Now you got to look though. Would that be good for our brand? Well, I can guarantee you, having the number one swim, like the Olympian in the world, that would be good for our brand. Uh, but would we see that fifty thousand? Say that that was a number. Would we see that back in our pockets? That's the hard part with most influencer marketing is most of the time, especially as you go up these, you know, mega celebrity, all those past mid tier, you're looking at investing thousands of dollars per, for one post. And so that's why I say that if you're going to work with somebody, you're going to pay them, you know, money, any amount of money, you want to make sure that you're, 
you're getting creativity and, and contribution from them. And it's not just, well, we're going to put you in, uh, you know, 13 minutes into a 17 minute video. We did that's, we did that. That happened to us once we paid 750 bucks to a, probably they'd be a mid tier influencer. They had 50,000 fans on YouTube and, uh, they put us 13 minutes into a 17 minute video. We had a giveaway that I had invested like three or $400 into the giveaway itself. Um, that would be an influencer horror story. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> this would yeah. be a horror story. Yeah. They said our name wrong. Didn't even take us out of the packaging. Talked about us for maybe 30 seconds. And then that was it. And then that was our $750. So really you want to work with people. The best people to work with are the people that already know, like, and trust your brand. So if you have, if you have customers, so say this, this audit that we had talked about earlier, one of the first things we're going to look at is what your inserts and your packaging says about you. Um, how are people going to connect? Do, are you giving people opportunities to connect with your brand? Because if you're building a list of your customers, those are the perfect people to go to first because they've already purchased from you, especially if you know that you have repeat purchasers because those people oh, that's cool. are pr well, they, they've proven that they love you because yeah. they keep paying to buy your stuff. So those people I would go to and I'd say, hey, we'd love to give you some free blah in exchange for blah, right? Whatever that may be. So our standard thing is we we try people out. We say, hey, we'd love to give you, you know, a free set of swim diapers if you if you can take four photos in a month, post them, you know, every week for a month, we'll reimburse you the full price of the of, of your swim diaper or whatever it was that you spent. This way, they're they're not necessarily we're not giving it to them up front. They're earning it on the back end. That's one met that's the method that we've been using for the past two and a half three years we're switching it up to be um very similar but it's a point-based system where they can get they can earn a certain amount of points to get a free swim diaper so loyalty points there loyalty points essentially all right so it's you know at the bottom of the hour i just want to uh, just remind people that if you do want to get that 500 hundred dollar giveaway that paul's offering the audit of your whole um uh, of of your uh, listing, it's well worth it. Even if you don't do anything with influencers, you'll get to know the good, the bad, the ugly of your marketing. And so I, I, I think it's fantastic. Uh, again, all you have to do is hashtag wheel of Kelsey, tag two people, get it, you know, join in. And by the way, I see there's a couple questions. We'll get to them a bit later. Um, if you do have any uh, experience with influencer, in influencers we'd love to hear from you is anybody that's listening using influencers and how did you get those influencers because that's going to be the next question how can people paul if, if they're not using an agency people find influencers what's the best way what are some action steps people can do to find influencers for their own brand yep so let's come back to your first your first question but you had said how important is branding how important is brand awareness and your social media following all that stuff? And I said, it is, it's, it is of utmost importance. So I cannot hit and hammer on that enough. If you mm -hmm. don't have a brand story. Okay. So this is, this would be the place that I would start if you don't have a brand now. And what I mean by this is not just a brand that you have brand registry on just because you have brand registry doesn't mean you have a brand, you know, it's a, it's not the field of dreams. If I mowed a baseball diamond in my cornfield, that doesn't mean that I have a stadium, right? It means that I have a baseball field in my corn, you know, a baseball field in my cornfield, right? It's it's not the same thing. So, um, when you're looking at building influencers, you have to pay attention to brands. So you have to think through. So with our brand, okay, our brand we started obviously like Norm said, we took ASM five, right? That was kind of the catalyst, but that was not. That is not the initial catalyst. That's not the initial reason why we picked our products. We picked our products because of an issue that we had personally with our son. Okay. So this is where storytelling comes into play. We tell the story of when our son was six months old, we started taking him swimming. Uh, we couldn't find any good options for swim diapers. We wanted to do reusable swim diapers. Currently on the market at the time, the only things that we had were single size reusables that actually made his legs, like they chafed his legs. Um, they were way too tight. They were not good for him. So we had to switch, we had to use disposables. When our kids were very little, they had skin issues, like ex they got eczema quite easily. 
So the swim diaper gave him diaper rash, but we, you know, we still wanted to go. So there was nothing out there. This was in December of 2014. We started taking ASM in March of 2015. That stuck in Rochelle's head, my wife, when she was looking for products. And she's going to be on your show, I don't know, in a while. I don't know when. May? Month and a half, I think. Month and a half. And yeah. she's going to be talking about product picking. And she emphasizes in her product picking is start something personal, personal experiences that you have, something you can be an expert on. Because of things like this, right? If you're building a brand, you want to be able to create unique selling propositions and stories. So our unique selling proposition, when you buy from us, we have this in our branding everywhere. So we're a family owned company. A portion of our proceeds go to Compassion International, which is a charity that works to get kids out of poverty worldwide. We, we help educate kids, provide education on, on clean water and that sort of stuff. The other thing that, that, that we do is, um, again, it's, we are kind of the face of our brand along with our influencers. We're kind of the heart and soul of our brand. It's my wife and I, and our kids. And so when you purchase from us, it's, you get the feeling that you, you're, you're a part of something bigger. Um, we have a whole bunch of other fun little Easter eggs that we hide throughout our packaging and our products and stuff that are designed to get people to be more integrated into loving our brand. So for example, we have a for best and a for worst results on our care label. Uh, the for worst results gets, people think it's hilarious because it's one of those things we don't talk about, but people take a picture of it and they put it on social all the time. So there's a lot of other stuff that we do in brand, brand building. We we're constantly working to get into best love lists and all these things. All of that's on the brand building side so that we can get more exposure. The way that PR and publicity works is generally speaking, you're going to have each subsequent outlet is going to look at the outlet below them. So if you want to get onto the today show, generally speaking, you're going to want to have a little bit of experience in local news media, other things like that. And it's, and it's, a cumulative effect. So think about your brand. Think about the story that you're telling around your brand. What is it? How, why are people going to love you? Why are they going to look at you and be, be like, oh my gosh, this is, there is, you know, it's not just the, the quality of the product that I love it. It's everything about it. Cause you want to, you want to be able to sort of pre-build the community before the community is built. And the communities that we're building are basically the diehard advocates that absolutely love us and support our mission and there are people that we can be friends with and in fact have become friends with in our in our influencers our influencer base um so when you want to start working with influencers start there start with story how are you connecting with people through story through storytelling you know all of these things if you don't have that you got to start you got to start somewhere think of, then think outwards from there what other unique selling propositions do you have is it that yours is made with a super absorbent extra blah, 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 or do you have anything patentable or what other reasons, right? But my point is, you're not just a me too product. You're not just another, you know, hyaluronic vitamin C serum, you know, dozens of dozens. You're not just another blah, blah, blah. There's something around it. Even think of like coffee, right? Black Rifle Coffee Company is like a bunch of my friends use it because I'm, I'm in Colorado. I'm friends with a bunch of rednecks and they like guns. So that's really the, I, as far as I can tell, the only thing unique about black rifle coffee company is that they have like, whether you like this or not, we're not talking about politics here, but they've got guns printed on their packaging and they're big in the gun community. So all those people, I don't get it. I don't know why I'm like, it's bad. Co I, I like coffee. I like good coffee. That's not good coffee. I don't like it. So anyway, so it's even like, it's a story. It's coffee, but that they somehow mix in guns and they've got a massive following. See, that's their uniqueness. It's not really that unique. And who would think coffee and guns? I, I don't know. Apparently the founders of Black Rifle did. So once you've got your story, you've got your unique selling proposition, something more to connect on an emotional level with people, then you've got something to work with. From there, what I would start doing is, like I said, first step is I would look at my current customer base, find out how, how am I uh, creating pathways for them to be uh, integrating with and connecting with my community. Um, are they, do, do I have an email signup list? Do I have a many chat signup list? Something like that where they, where I can contact them and then tell them about this community. Now, what we do inside the community when we're pushing people into this influencer team is we're just basically asking people to take photos of their kids and our products and share them with us on social media. That's it. 
It can be just that simple. If you wanted to make it a little bit more complex, you could have like contests and you could do like gamification and you could do, you know, rewards for whoever takes the most engaging picture or whoever drives the most traffic or whoever gets the most sales or something along those lines. But it's really just as simple as asking someone on social media if they would be willing to take pictures of themselves, their kids, their friends, whatever, using your products. And the best place to start is your customers. Again, falling back on everything else that I just, I feel like I might've beat to death with the branding thing. You've got to start with brand. If you don't have brand, you're working up, you're like, you're rolling a boulder uphill. And I gotta, I gotta show you this too, um, Norm. So we had two decent press hits in May. Mm -hmm. One was health, healthline.com. We were listed in their, um, I think we're number one. Yeah, we're the best overall swim diaper. So that's a new press hit. Right alongside probably one of the worst blogs. <laughs> like, it's so bad. It. We get, this is the thing, is that when you're looking to try to get publicity and build stuff, you've got to, you just got to put yourself out there. Mm -hmm. So we got this, this was a week later. I'm going to share my screen, Kelsey. So do you see this piece? Look at this. How could how could you how could you read on this website? It's so bright. <laughs> Look at this photo. She literally took it, left it in the in the poly bag, and put it on the bed. <laughs> like that's the photo that she gave. And this is my point that this person was on Haro. Help a reporter out. That's one place that you can find people. Mm -hmm. Generally speaking, you're going to get a lot of stuff like this. But here's the thing: is that this links back to uh that goes to our website i think it goes to our website i don't think any of these goes go to our yeah none of these go to um amazon but seriously <laughs> these are the worst these are so bad she could have put them on her kid or something and but then it, like a week earlier we got healthline and right. best best overall and so this is kind of my point is like if well, that's one of one of my points if you're trying to get exposure. You got to start somewhere. You're going to get good stuff. You're going to get bad stuff. You're not going to get the good stuff without the bad stuff though, generally speaking. So you got to be okay to do these things. And now we didn't pay anything for the Haro, that Haro lady. Uh, Haro, for those of you guys that are listening, it stands for Helper Reporter Out. It's a website that you can get for free. And basically people put in like pitches. And I know that you actually talked about this. I remember this in Austin. That was one of the things that you had mentioned. Um, we had, in, in fact, Norm, we had used it prior to Austin, that mastermind, but I signed up specifically because you talked about it in that talk, Austin, oh. 2018. Huh. And we've had, we've had a $50 membership ever since then because of your talk. I'm just now connecting the dots on that. Um, oh, and we've gotten a ton of great, we got a ton of great hits out of Haro. We got parents.com out of Haro. We got a bunch of other things. So, so starting well, with influencers, let's, let's sorry, talk about, let's go back. Uh, yeah. Let's go back to Haro. How does it work? So Haro, so this lady, uh, Missy's product reviews. Haro stands for help a reporter out. When it was started, it was just a Facebook group. And it was just a Facebook group of reporters going to each other and saying, hey, do you guys have a source for this story I'm working on? Like I'm working on a story on the like environmental cleanup of the Exxon Valdez 20 years later or something like that, right? So they'd be looking, they'd be looking for sources for that. There are still reporters that use Haro, but it's become, I don't know what you've you've seen. It's almost like 50-50, like actual reporters and bloggers. Maybe 60, 40, 70, 30 bloggers to reporters. I've, I see a lot more bloggers now. Yeah. But it's a really it's a great place for you to get quick links built. If you look at if you're familiar with SEO, one of the best things that you can do in SEO is get inbound links to your site from high authority sites. Um, the higher the authority of the site, like Healthline, the better. You know, parents.com, that's good. Um, I don't really know how good Missy's product reviews are, but, you know, God bless her. She's trying and she's she's doing something. So um, that's how it works is that, say, like Missy would say, I'm doing a um, like a spring roundup or something. We'll, we'll see these often, like Mother's Day gift roundup or um, spring vacation round gift guide or something like that is the, what you'll commonly see. And you just submit your stuff to those gift guides. Now, Haro, you can go and sign up and then you're going to get like an email every day, the free version, the paid version is like 50 bucks. 
and you can set up keyword alerts. So we set up keyword alerts for, I think, mother, mom, baby, toddler, things, things of those nature. I can't remember exactly. Uh, maybe swim, swim diapers, that sort of stuff. But um, you get an alert if you're doing that, you know, you get, get it in your inbox and then you just follow the steps and then you apply, you send basically a pitch to the person. You explain what your product is. You know, oftentimes if they, if they want to work with you, then you mail them a free product, then you wait and then you get stuff like this. Sometimes it's amazing. Sometimes it's garbage, but you're out of free product and maybe 50 bucks if you're doing. And that's, yeah. that's a really, that's a good place to start. And I like to stress too, this is kind of interesting. So user generated content, that's a big buzzword phrase right now, right? Mm -hmm. And uh, for your swim diapers over a three month period, this is crazy. You got over 2000 images. We have, yeah, we have over 6,000 now. 6,000 um, now, but over that three months, you, you got 2000, correct? Yep, our first year doing this, um, I think we got a thousand images our first year in the first three month stretch, which was way above. I was wanting 300. I wanted, you know, two yeah. to 300. And now not every single one of those images are going to be absolutely incredible. You know, some of them are going to be like inside a dirty bathroom with the kids sitting on the floor, whatever. But every now and again, you're going to have some that are like, literally you would have paid a part of a thousand dollar, $2,000 photo shoot for that. You're, you know, you're not paying so that for. What do you think, uh, dollar wise, how much promotion, free promotion you've received? So I would have to look for sure. I know for sure we have 6,000, uh, lifestyle photos that we're sitting mm -hmm. on. If, so there's two methods that I look at calculating. One is earned media value. So earned media, again, that's a, that's a publicity phrase. When you get a hit in, in parents.com, that's, you're not paying for it. That's earned right. media. You earned it. Right. So earned media value is if we were to pay, so if we would have paid for those influencers to post our product photos, on average, nano influencers go for between $10 a post and $100 a post. So a good example, the, fo the, the photos on the bed, that's a $10 post. I would never pay for that. It's a free post. <laughs> it's a free post, <laughs> maybe. I'm like, ugh, I don't know if I want that. Can you actually just take that down? <laughs> I'm going to pay you to take it down. Um, that would be a $10 takedown post. Yeah. Um, but the, uh, if, sorry, Missy, if you ever watch this, I'm totally ripping your website to shreds. Um, but you're trying and that's what matters. Mm -hmm. So $10 post, $100 post. Our our stuff is a lot higher quality that we get from our influencers. So I calculate that at the, at the $100 rate. So it's $600,000 worth of earned media that we've gotten for free, right. essentially. Now, if we're looking at paying for lifestyle photos, in the past, I'd, I've done several photo shoots. And when you hire a professional photographer, uh, generally it's either going to be a full day or half day rate. Most of the time, it's like four to $500 for two to four hours, half day. And that's for an affordable photographer too. Like if you're going like big and you have a photographer with the assistance, then you have to pay for the models. You're looking at thousands of dollars, not just a couple hundred. This is like, your friend's a photographer and they're doing you a solid rate, 500 bucks for 20 photos. Right. That's what we've done. So if we look at it that way, it's uh, 600. So 6,000 photos would be, uh, uh, I should know this math. So 6,000 divided by say 20. So that's 300 shoots times $500 per shoot. That's $150,000 in, um, in lifestyle photography if we had paid for it, which, we don't really do a ton of lifestyle photography. We don't really do that stuff a ton ourselves because we have the brand and brand ambassador team and influencer team that does that. Now, Rochelle is going to Florida and she is going to, she is taking the kids when I'm going next week on my mastermind fishing trip. Um, she's taking the kids to Florida to a beach and she's bringing a photographer because I'm going to be gone. And it's a, you know, it's a beach vacation photo shoot right off. So we'll probably get maybe 50 to a hundred photos out of that. Um, the only reason why we're doing this, we have all the samples here first and we're going to get all these and then we're going to send them to our brand ambassadors and they'll, they'll take photos later. But yeah. So if you look at it, maybe 750,000, about a half million or million to a million, you know, three quarters of a million worth of exposure that we've gotten. The you other said, uh, 
brand ambassador. So mm-hmm. people get that confused. What is a brand ambassador? Are they influencers? Are they not influencers? Is something completely different? Yeah, they are. They're influencers. So a brand ambassador is somebody who is really the face of your brand. And there's kind of two flavors of brand ambassadors. You have like a brand ambassadorship where it's like everybody and anybody could be a brand ambassador. You just have to, you know, show that you love the brand. So um, a good company to look at for this, an example, this would be Pura Vita bracelets. Uh, They do a really good job with their brand ambassador program. Um, another one method could be like the one face of the company that they're, they're the brand ambassador. So trying to think of like the most interesting man in the world, Dos Equis, Mm -hmm. right? Dos Equis, that guy, he's the brand ambassador. Uh, You can't, I don't even know the guy's real name. He's just the most interesting man in the world. Like he would technically be like a brand ambassador, if that makes sense. Another brand, another version would be say somebody who you have an ongoing contract with for them to come up with creative posts and things that they put on social to highlight your brand. That would be a a brand ambassador. Now the method that we're doing is we're basically taking the many approach that we're just saying the bar is you have to love us and you just have to post about us. That would be another version of a brand ambassador, but yes, they are all influencers. Now, are you able to show the brand ambassador page that you have for Bow and Bell? It's being revamped. I can show okay. you the current. I can show you the current one. Okay. I'm going to show you one thing here. Um, and this is kind of cool. So you can see exactly how uh, Paul goes about recruiting. One second here. And the other thing that uh, he he brushed on was really working together with the influencer, the brand ambassador. Um, Paul will get together with a group of his brand ambassadors and, you know, just have a get together, a picnic, uh, you know, a meetup just to show his appreciation. So yeah, yes. this is the page I was thinking of. So this is the page. So we have, this is the current one. And again, we're, we're revamping this. It's going to mm-hmm. be a lot more, this is good, but it's going to be better. And that will be released, I think in the first part of May. So you're so, driving influencers over here, repeat customers but mm-hmm. people that really have a passion for your brand. And what what does this say? I, like, uh, I'm blind as a bat. So it, it's saying that you have to uh, do certain things, correct? So what we're doing, we're not explaining all the, all the obligations yet. What we're mm-hmm. saying is, here's the benefits. You know, by applying, you get this stuff. When you complete, you get this stuff. So basically, by applying, they get three, four products up to 50% off. That's the current, the old way that we were doing it. Mm-hmm. When they completed it, if they completed the terms of their agreement, which was basically that they take four photos in a month, we'll reimburse them another 25%. So they have 75% off, which is essentially our product cost. So we're not out any money. Yep. If they enjoy working with us, then they get invited to become the brand rep and become a brand ambassadors. Um, this button clicks to apply in Messenger. So if they click to apply, it opens in Messenger, um, which is our application goes through messenger there this is a video explaining what the brand rep program is again like we've got a newer video uh newer page coming then we have another another why so like benefits this this is more why this is a little bit more about what the brand enthusiast is and then we explain that we do a lot of our communication through facebook groups and facebook messenger so that they need to you know we're encouraging them to go through messenger one thing I was thinking of too, Norm, this is our Giphy channel. And if you can see, this is, we've had 10.3 million GIF views. Now, why that matters is that if you see like on Instagram, for example, like things like this, swipe up, you you get those, you put those in stories. So our influencers will put these on stories. This one alone has had 300,000 views. The only people really doing this are our brand our brand ambassadors because the keywords that we have, Bowen Bell Littles, Moose, Swipe Up, BB Littles. So all of these are generally just tied to our influencers. And we know that within the past 19, 20 months, which is how long this has been running, um, we've had almost 10 million views of our stories, people that are, are seeing our stuff in story mm-hmm. form because of our influencers. Um, and so- now, who, who owns the content? We co-own it. 
So generally speaking, when you're working with an influencer and let's say you partner with another agency, most of the time the influencer is going to own the content and they license it to you. What we do is um, we actually have them release rights to the content to us so that we can use it and modify it, you know, into the future if we wanted to, or if we needed to. So, um, I don't know if it's necessarily, they own it, we own it, but they're releasing rights to it is what they're saying. Right. And, and that's important. That's really important. Right. And a good, you know, case for this is we had this long convoluted story. There was this event that we were going to, we were exhibiting at, um, in 2019 and there was some scandal that happened at the top with one of the people involved. And there was a lot of backlash in this community, this, this community of people that followed these events. And one, one of our brand reps had asked us to remove all of the photos of her kid that we ever posted. I don't really know why she had, she was concerned that there was like people looking at pictures of her kids that were predators or something. Didn't the logic, there was none because those photos are still on her feed. And if there's a weirdo on the internet looking at whatever, that's whatever it was. So we said, okay, fine, we'll do this. But we had legal rights to not, if we wanted to be dicks, we could have. Um, we said, no, that's fine. We'll remove them. Our social media manager accidentally posted a photo of her kid a few months later, tagged her in the photo because that's what we do. You know, we tagged the, our influencers in the photos. She got all really, she got pissed, super angry. And she was saying how she was going to get her father-in-law involved, who's a lawyer. And so this was when I said, well, you know, sorry, it was an honest mistake. But, you know, again, this is the contract that you signed. We showed it to her. So, you know, there's really nothing legally. And I hate being in a position like this. I don't, I'm all about, I'm a relationship person. I'm a builder and a connector. I'm not a, I'm not a win at all cost type person. So it kind of, it was really sad that that happened, but we're legally protected. If she decided that she wanted to get her father-in-law involved to sue us, she wouldn't have any legal grounds to stand on because she had released rights to her photos to us in perpetuity, meaning forever. Yeah. Okay. Very good. So Kels, question wise, what do we got? Okay. So we got quite a few questions that came in, um, but we'll start with Tony. Uh, so he's asking about contest. Uh, how about making a contest where influencers have to compete for cash prizes? I'm trying this now. What are your thoughts? Yeah, those work great. Um, they, what really works great is a, is a solo competition that they can compete against themselves. And then when they, when they have the opportunity to compete against the community or with the group, um, then those, that's, those work really great. Yeah. And we, uh, we use an app called King Sumo, which mm -hmm. is, is really great for putting together uh, contests. And speaking of contests, if you go over to Norm's Instagram page <laughs> in the bio, in the link, you'll see that we have an AirPod contest. That's the easiest way to enter that contest. And that is a King Sumo contest, by the way. So thought I'd just mention that. Uh, next, Simon, uh, would you separate influencers from affiliates or could they be one in the same? They're the same in my head. Now you could spin it so that you only want to work with people that are affiliates or let's say Amazon affiliates specifically if you wanted it to like limit a list, a real quick search, you know, I, I don't include this in any of my speech. I, I need to do this, but there are standard terms as just a uh, service like disclaimer um, that it's such and such a person is an Amazon affiliate or the site. You can just copy that text from the Amazon affiliates associates page and just search for that. And also search for things like in your niche, say mother or, or mom or, you know, swim diaper, like what we're doing. And then you could return a whole slew of sites that are already Amazon associates that have that disclaimer. And then you could just contact them. Chances are those people are also going to have an in, a social media presence. Typically what we're looking for is the Delta where they have a good Instagram or good social media and a decent blog. You know, every now and again, we'll do something like with this Missy's product reviews. Um, she has 5,000 followers on Instagram her content's terrible, but she's got decent followers. So she would technically could be considered an influencer. Okay. okay. Uh, oh, I had a question about the Giphy. Um, 
So what is the main purpose of using Giphy? Is it just like brand awareness, like showing people the content or? Yeah, for us, it was just brand awareness. We just wanted to have cool gifts that people could put in their stories when they were tagging us. And then I realized that we could also use it to track views. Uh, okay. <clears throat> okay, uh, from Victor, how many Insta followers should a small brand have to appear credible to micro influencers? Is 2000 sufficient? I mean, we had 500 when we got started. You got to think, you know, we had 500 when we got started, we were accepting anybody into our program that wanted to work with us. Like, you know, as long as they had a public account, their content was on brand. Didn't we didn't we and we still do this. We don't really have a bar in terms of like who we work with. Some people we work with have over 100,000 followers. Some people have 2000. When we started, we had 500. So you don't need to worry about how much you have, you want to look more at the quality of the content that you're putting out and the engagement of the content. So like how many people are engaging in your, with your content, that would give you a good um, pulse check to see if you're not getting engagement, then that means that you're not posting stuff that your following cares about. Right. Okay. Um, from Hazna, this is a bit long. Uh, what do you think about meme pages? Not the vulgar ones, but like pet meme pages. I'm guessing they're a great way for awareness. Um, made a post in the group recently about this. Uh, not good for sales because technically there's no influencer to influence. As far as I know, these pages don't post a lot of sponsored content, but have a decent reach and low rates. Memes, memes are great. So I don't, I wouldn't partner with them. I just do my own. I mean, one way that you, one way that you can do is um, you could look at popular memes and make your own version of that meme. Um, you know, or do things that are funny within your, in your niche. Right. So I did a meme, uh, two years ago on our page that got 3 million reach uh, organically. Like we didn't boost it. And it was funny because Facebook kept offering to let me boost it to reach like 2000 people or something. <laughs> and I, and here I'm already reaching 3 million and it was a diaper changing meme. It was a, you know, expectations versus reality, like expectations. You have this happy mom changing a kid and they're smiling, but the reality is it's actually like a wrestling match. And so that, that was the meme. And it's funny because any parent gets it right. That's a great thing about memes and specifically content that you're posting. Um, you need to post content. That's going to get that. Like you did you little chuckle there. That's a reaction. You want a reaction from people. You want a thumb stopper and you want them to either, Elicit, you want to elicit a, re a reaction. Maybe the reaction is they stop their thumb and they and they tap, they double tap. Maybe the reaction is they're like, oh my gosh, my sister needs to see this. In my head, the best type of content is going to be like, this is so me, or this is so blah, somebody I know. That's that's the content that you're going after. And you can do your own memes. There's no reason that you need to go to meme pages. Now, with that being said, piggybacking off of already popular content gives you juice like facebook passes that juice to you you got you you get um my friend rachel miller calls it uh fairy dust facebook fairy dust you're accumulating or you're spending fairy dust you accumulate fairy dust by getting people to engage and con and like talk to you and like you, here's the party let's hang out on facebook right because facebook is nepotistic they want you to stay with them they they're they 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 make money when you're on their platform. So if you can help Facebook do that, meaning create content, get people engaged, stay on their platform, you're accumulating fairy dust. You spend fairy dust by taking people off platform, going to a website, you know, sending them to a blog or something like that. So one way that you can accumulate fairy dust is just get on the coattails of somebody who's got a lot of fairy dust. So you find a meme that's on the rise, reshare that meme, and then you you kind of, you're attracting some fairy dust that way. Yeah, and I just posted a link to a site that I use. It's all free. Um, it's called Capwing, and it's perfect for making your own memes. They have yeah. um, some popular memes that are trending right now that you can use from, and it's it's very simple to just add a, a copy and download a picture and just add the meme fonts. So if anyone listening, that's a easy way to do that. Um, okay, yeah, how many more questions do we have, Kels? I'm not sure. We have quite a few, though. Yeah, All right. I so we're you know, one... we could probably go until about one fifteen. So just to uh, anybody new that's uh, on board, you know, hashtag Wheel of Kelsey, and you'll be entered into this draw for the five hundred dollar uh, listing audit. 
Okay. Uh, from Rad, what kind of budget do we need to allocate for Amazon Lives with uh, influencers? It depends on the influencer. There's three tiers of Amazon Live influencers. If they're in the t in the highest top tier, you know, thousands of dollars. Um, if they're just getting started, maybe a couple hundred. Typically, what I'll I would prefer to do is I like to work out extra commission deals where they're going to get their Amazon associates, Amazon affiliate or influencer. I don't know. They've changed the name of that program like three times in the past five years. So it used to be Amazon associates then it was Amazon affiliates or it was affiliates and it's associates and now it's influencers, whatever. Um, what I'll do is I'll often like see if we can double the commission that they get from Amazon, you know, any sale that they get will double their commission. So if they get 2% commission, we'll give them another 2% commission. So they get 4% commission. Um, it just depends on the influencer, how well known they are, how big their reach is, how big their audience is, how engaged they are. You're not going to want to partner with anybody who's just going to take your money and not start talking, talking to you about objectives. Never give your money to somebody who just doesn't care about what you're trying to achieve ever. Okay. Uh, from Marsha, can you please discuss how you come back when your influencer falls out of grace with the public, this happens so often these days when any little slip up is instantly caught on some phone and posted, it's a slippery slope. Well, thankfully that hasn't happened. Um, I mean, we sort of, we sort of had that happen with, you know, we weren't working with them. It was that, it was that trade show thing that had a big person sort of, it was, a, I'm a part of my friends. It was a shit storm, like in this really small community, we just distanced ourselves and we sent basically we did a post to people concerned letting them know that we stand basically our stance on the issue in general and not for or against the person so we made a stance on the issue which that was what we did again it wasn't the biggest deal now we we haven't ever had like you know in, in you know we've never worked with like a Britney Spears or Justin Bieber, you know, when they're going through their mental health crisis and whatnot. So I can't speak to that, Marsha, but <laughs> um, it can be a slippery slope. And I think that's the biggest thing is that in our small experience, we just, again, we distance ourselves. We made a statement about this, the issue, not the people. Okay. Uh, from Steven. Uh, I only got one product at, at the moment. When do you think I should start collaborate, collaborating with influencers? Yesterday. Yeah. There's no reason. That here's it, like this is the thing. Obviously, it will be easier when you have more products. But if you're always waiting for the right time, the right time will never come. You got to make the right time. Okay. So, um, don't yeah, don't let just one product slow you down. We have a client who has one product. She's about to release two. Client partner. And um, at first, we were having a really hard time attracting influencers, and then we switched up our methodology. Um, we were we were just building audience first, and then we started driving traffic. And then on the back end of the traffic, where we were driving sales, we back end um, started offering those people a, an opportunity to collaborate, and that was that became that was actually really successful, or it is really successful. Yeah. So, Stephen, you can also just start targeting those repeat customers. Yep. And start building that list. Okay, this is from Anthony. Uh, so does Paul focus on product advertising or story advertising? I'm not exactly sure what you mean there. Um, I'm assuming that you mean like storytelling or brand awareness versus direct call to action. So that's how I'll answer it. I'm assuming you mean call to action. So a direct CTA, a direct call to action would be a sales, a sales ad where you're just driving traffic. You're just trying to get sales. Um, brand awareness, maybe story advertising. And if I'm answering this wrong, feel free to clarify. Um, I Most of the time, the advertising that we do when we pay for ads, it's going to be some sort of direct call to action where we're, where we're wanting to track ROI. Um, and maybe that call to action will be just as simple as like join our influencer team. Um, oftentimes the call to action is, you know, we've got a new product, we got a new product here. It's this percentage off for this long you know, tap below to send us a message to get more details. That's a call to action where we're, where we're driving sales. Um, the other, I guess the other reason I don't understand it because you have stories on Instagram. So there's Instagram stories and then there's static posts. Um, 
right now the majority of people on Instagram are really there's a lot of story views, more story views than actual um, post views. So story views are worth more in the short term, but they're ephemeral. They only last for 24 hours. So we want a mix of everything. And if that's going to be kind of my standard reply when I'm like, do you do this or that? Most of the time is going to be, I do both. And I try to, I have a, I have a mix. Okay. Uh, Dr. Cause. Hi, Paul. What do you think of a brand mascot? For example, I love the cartoon of Norm's coffee cup. Uh, serious yet fun. What's your take on this topic? I love it. Um, anything that you can have that will be an icon or a symbol of your brand. And that's essentially what a mascot is. Isn't there an icon or a symbol that people rally behind? Really what a brand is, is a brand is something that leaves a mark on someone. Okay. That's, you think of like where it originated, people branding cattle with the burning iron. It's, it was branded because you need to know that that cow belongs to this person. They're branded. So branding something is you're imprinting something. You're leaving a mark on something. And so your brand should leave a mark on people. And so how we associate things with brands would be would be with visual cues, auditory cues, those, you know, those sorts of things where we see, okay, this is a part of the Apple brand because it has clean design. It has the Apple logo. You know the Apple brand, right? So that's that's what I think of. And brand mascots can be appropriate and can be inappropriate, right? Like I'm not gonna see Apple releasing a mascot of an apple, <laughs> right? That would be off brand for Apple. Now it is on brand for Toys R Us to have, you know, the Tony, the giraffe or whatever his name was. Jeffrey. I don't know if I should, Jeffrey, Tony, <laughs> Jeffrey, whatever, it, you know, he's Toys R Us is still alive and well in Canada. Not so much in America. Is it? But <laughs> I, I don't know. It was, it was bought. Yeah. It was brought out of bankruptcy, resurrected in Canada. Um, so if it's appropriate for your brand, yes. If it's not appropriate for your brand, it just depends on your brand itself, the voicing, how that sort of stuff. Okay. Uh, this is just a comment from Jessica. I worked with an influencer who didn't assemble our very simple product properly. All the photos were very strange. So oh. it does yeah. happen. Uh, that's, that's another reason why when you work with influencers, it's not going to be a one and done. It's not easy. I mean, that's the reason why people hire us to be completely honest, Norm. I mean, at the chat agency, because conceptually, so th this is my, my, my job and my, my goal as a human is to show people, I don't know, I want to, I want to help them along whatever path they're on. Right. So I, it's in my best interest is to help it be easy for you, but quite simply, simple things at scale are complex. Okay. Like when you're mailing, when you're mailing one package a day, that's very simple. When you're mailing 100,000 packages a day, that's incredibly complex. When you're working with one influencer, that's simple. When you're working with 1,000 influencers, it's complex. And so think through it like this. Like If you're trying to do this on repeat, think about processes that you can put into place. And again, that's why people work with us, because we already have the processes. We're not having to experiment. So with that, Jessica, I mean, one of the ways that you could prevent it is just say, hey, I want it. Once you get it, let me know. Let's talk through some strategies of how we, you want to use this or feature it for your audiences. And, you know, the best way to come up with creative stuff, literally just spend time watching stupid TikTok videos. Spend time. Give yourself the freedom to scroll through Instagram. Find ads that are funny and engaging and then make notes about why you like them. Why is this funny? Why is this engaging? Is it on brand? Is it, is the voicing? Is it on point for your brand? And that's that's what I look at. Again, if I'm going to pay somebody, I look at creativity. There has to be collaboration. That you know, here's how it looks. And oftentimes too, if you're if you're working with influencers, we have a brand guidelines document that we send to people that are this is how you use our brand this is how you this is how our logo should appear don't do this do this this is how the photos we have of our products need to look don't do this so as your brand matures um, i would encourage you to do that you know another thing you could do too if you're doing something a bit more complicated like putting together a baby crib or something along those lines you might have a video showing you know, how you're putting it together. If, if you're going to be asking people to do more of these types of videos or images, because 
if they can put it together wrong, if they can put the wrong screw in somewhere, I mean, that, that definitely could be, um, you know, complicated or complicate mm -hmm. things. And you might get somebody who has no idea how to put together something. So that's one thing. And on the other side of this, um, this is a perfect opportunity to work with influencers to say, look, it, can you can you target this benefit or can you target these features? And all of a sudden you'll end up with 10, 20, 30, a thousand, you know, different images that are highlighting different features that you need to show on Amazon posts. Oh, and remember that when you're on Amazon post, you can also repurpose on any of the social media platforms. So it's just tons of user uh, generated content. Mm -hmm. Okay. So we have just a couple questions left. Sure. Um, so we had a, Couple from Simon and Red. First of all, about Clubhouse. Uh, so, oh my when, God, Paul, what's the, don't what's get the him started. On, what's the thought on Clubhouse? Uh, has it died a death, or um, is it still happening? Um, also, what time is your Clubhouse at? Yep. So, no, Clubhouse has not died. It's been Amazon private labeled, and this, I'm going to be real, real here. Everybody and their brother who wants to get money out of people has started a club. They have their own club. Everyone has an Amazon club. And so what I'm seeing is, um, you know, I've been using it since December. Norm got in about, I don't know, mid-December too. <clears throat> You've been on it for a while. And what I'm seeing is that like all the content that we were doing, it's, it's people are doing a lot of the same type of stuff. So like the, like the ask me anything rooms that I've run for, I don't know, since January, what is that? 16 weeks now. That's crazy. Almost 14 weeks, something like that. Um, we're seeing a lot of those similar, I don't want to call them copycat rooms, but it's a lot of noise. I'm just saying, I'm hearing a lot of noise. And I think that where clubhouse is going to go is that you're going to have people, same reason why people buy our products over competition, because, um, we are creators. The other people are copiers. That's all it comes down to it. I am a creator. I create. I innovate. I have cool things that I do all the time. We have a com we have a competitor. This is really funny too, Norm. One of our competitors, I've noticed that they basically copy everything we do in terms of like their 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 aesthetic, everything. Um, during one of the clubhouse sessions, one of the guys that was a moderator messaged me after. He's like, "That guy used to be my client." <laughs> He messaged me like this particular person. And I was like, that's hilarious because I could totally tell. Anyway, the person gave up. They sold because they're like, we don't want to compete with them. So they sold to this other uh, uh, Chinese company who's doing less less than admirable things to us. But that's what I'm seeing on Clubhouse is that um, there's a lot of noise. I don't think it's going to die. What I think is going to happen is people are just getting more savvy with their time. You know, if you have like 25 ask me anything shows you can go to, you're going to go to the one that you like the best or, you know, is the best, which is, which is obviously mine. Uh, I'll give you what time is your podcast at three o'clock today so. mountain, which is five o'clock Eastern. Right. And, you know, um, Paul runs a, a very good uh, room, you know, uh, if you, that's what they're called on clubhouse. Well, one of the things Paul knows my pet peeves now about Clubhouse and, you know, it's not about what he's doing or saying on Clubhouse. It's about everybody. It's the message. Like I can go into a room any hour of the day, including the middle of the night, have the exact same people talking about the exact same things. And even if you take a look at the followers, like what I'm seeing is the the, uh, the amount of people that are going over to Instagram and starting to follow, it's starting to, to plateau, you know? Mm -hmm. And there's only so many people that are, there's actually there's creating a lot of people with a lot of different opinions that all end up being correct in their own way, but they're in every bloody room. And it's just, right. it, it's very tough, uh, at least for me, to go in and sit for three hours and to either listen or to, you know, just, it's the same people over and over. And what do you think? Like, we're, we're completely off topic. Well, no, because it, it does, inf it, it does, I mean, it is an influencer network. But mm -hmm. um, what do you think? Like, 
Uh, about that specific point, Paul. I, I think it's, yeah. I mean, I think Clubhouse is incredibly valuable if you want it to be, and it can be yeah. an incredible time suck if you don't watch but it. But what about so, the same people being on the same yeah. rooms in the, being asked the same questions from the, I can't say the same people, but, um, you know, I've cut back on it myself, mm -hmm. uh, you know, just because you'd be sucking up so much time, but, yeah. uh, yeah, like you're, you're one of the influencers that are on there that, you know, are doing a good job. You've continued to try to promote and run really great rooms, but again, yeah. I, I've got some, I've got some show. Yeah. I've got some show concepts that are going to be a lot more valuable than yeah. um than other things and i guess the other the other thing that i try to do is curate people i only allow people on my stage to answer questions if if i jive with them and i know that they're good people yeah they're not going to give bad advice that's not always the case but anyway clubhouse is interesting I, i'm gonna i don't think it's i don't think it's going anywhere i think it's just going to get better and i think right now it's in that weird toddler or even preteen phase of like trying to figure out the um you know i appreciate that rad yeah that one's my club amz plus ecom brand scaling is the one that you can join yeah okay, and we'll so... put that in the show notes too uh the other thing about clubhouse is that we haven't we didn't touch on how brands can build up their story on clubhouse and build up their influencers through clubhouse yep. i don't think they're doing enough of that I, if, no. if if that was the case, uh, you know, I, I would join a clubhouse room talking about a specific brand and the, you know, what are the benefits of a certain niche it might be pets. It might be health. It might be whatever. Don't see that mm -hmm. very much qu quite yet. I, um, I started a, a, a scotch club, scotch club, and I'm going to, you know, in clubhouse because I want to just talk about, I like scotch. I don't drink it very often, but I like it. Yeah. Um, same thing like with cigars, like I, you're going to see more stuff like that. And I think that that's really where Clubhouse is going to go interest based. Yeah. And, and you're going to find people that, you know, these are the good clubs. These are the bad clubs. And right now, everybody and their mother is just trying to join Clubhouse and do something because they've heard that's what you need to do. And so there is a lot of noise, but you're going to have the quality. The cream will settle to the crop. The cream of the crop will settle to the top and the rest will just fall off, in yeah. my opinion. Okay, Kels, any other questions? All right, we have three questions, and I think we should probably cap it at that. Yep, three um, questions. Let's go. 120, uh, then we still got to do the wheel. So, uh, Jeffrey, how do you do the audit if you're just launching or only have one product? So that's for the chat agency. Um, typically, what we're going to do, Jeffrey, is we'll look at um, more of a putting together a strategy to, to get you like pre-launch. Because one of the things that I don't think that Amazon sellers generally do well is pre-launch. There's a lot of talk about launch, but there's not many people talking about pre-launch. And pre-launch, think of it like if you don't have Amazon to lean on, how are you going to drive traffic anywhere, right? So you got to build a list and launch to that list. That's pre-launch. And that would basically be what it would look like in, a, in, in your case. Like if you're about to launch one product, um, you haven't launched before, I would look at really aggressive pre-launch, building an audience so that you're launching to an audience that you own versus having to go the standard route, which is you've got nothing, so you've got to do rebates, which is not there. Again, they're not necessarily a bad strategy. I just don't think that they're they're not a very effective long-term strategy. Okay. Uh, I'm not sure who this is from, uh, but do I need to have a ton of photos to hire the chat agency? No, I mean that, no, that, cause we, that's what we work to get you is with, you know, the influencers again, it, it's not, we're not a good solution for every single person. Um, every brand, you know, you have to have brand first thinking. You have to understand that you're investing into building a list and building, building out your community. Um, but that's what you get from the influencers is the photos, the user generated content. Okay. And it could be photos. It could be, and when we talk about, uh, user generated content, photos, videos, or blog content. They could be writing some information or a blog article about you. Yep. Okay. And I just posted a uh, Paul's clubhouse room. So you can go ahead Good. and join that. Um, and our last question is from Simon. 
Uh, is there any legal issues we should look for, out for if your influencer makes a claim, such as the spoon is the best silicone spatula in the world? Could the actual number one spoon make uh, make or sue them or us? I'm not a lawyer. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> here's, but that would be in my, their opinion, right? But That's in their opinion. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, in my opinion, I mean, you can't control people's opinions. Yeah. I mean, you you can influence opinions, but you can't necessarily control them. Now, um, the, the real things you do need to look after are FTC guidelines in terms of whether or not they're getting compensated, you know, even in the form of a free product, you would want them to, you know, make a disclaimer that, you know, we've gotten these, these items for free from Bowen Bell Littles or something, you know, opinions are all our own or something along those lines. Um, but that you can look at the actual FTC.gov site and look at the guidelines for social media influencers. Um, but the other advice I would give is, uh, you know, talk to Rich. I mean, Rich runs, and this is another thing, like Rich runs a great room every Thursday, Rich Goldstein, on patent and IP law. And so you can go in and ask a question there. And that's amazing because instead of having to pay whatever his consulting fee is, you just go to Clubhouse and ask him a question. Boom. Yeah. That, now, that, that is a great, um, yeah, that, that, that's a, it's a good room and that's a great example. He will tell you though, that this is not legal advice because he's not your lawyer and a lawyer is you pay a contract so that they know the entire scope of the issue. Mm -hmm. So that's one thing that he will say is that this is my opinion. It's not legal advice, even though I'm a lawyer, <laughs> he's very careful because he's, he's a lawyer. He's very careful with that. Right. So yeah. I would, I would go there to get non advice, get advice, but it's whatever <laughs> lawyers legal. I don't know. I'm not a lawyer. Is there one more question that snuck in there, Kels? Oh yeah. Um, this is from Usman. Uh, how do you utilize neuromarketing via influencers? That's a huge topic. So neuromarketing would be more along the lines of like psychological trigger based polls and that sort of thing. Um, I could die. I, that's, I think it's too big a question to answer right now, but basically the way that I look at it is everything that we do both at the chat agency and it, Bowen Bell Littles is grounded in what we understand about human psychology, what causes people to do things versus it, like not do other things. So, um, yeah. Okay. Sorry, and that, that, could be, that was not a very good be, answer. Uh, yeah, that, that could actually, we could get a panel discussion going on that. So Usman, great question. And I'm thinking of a few people right now that we can come back, including yourself, Paul, and do a panel discussion on that. That's pretty cool. Mm -hmm. All right. So I think that's it for the questions. Wow. Long hour and a half on this podcast, Paul. Should have cut either me I, off a half hour either ago. I, either I talk too much or I'm super engaging. No, it's very good. Very good. Okay. So <laughs> what's up? <laughs> all right so let's let's get started with the wheel of kelsey all right here we go it's time for the wheel of kelsey okay everyone's favorite time of or the episode the wheel of kelsey i've added everyone's names this is for the 500 audit uh $500 value uh, social media audit from the chat agency. And just want to give a shout out to Hayden who made the song and video for the Wheel of Kelsey. But here That's we go. Hayden Farrar. Two, did he put, one. did he put those glasses on your face too, Kels? He did. <laughs> those are amazing. <laughs> yeah. Marsha. Oh, is it Marsha or Andrew? Oh, Marsha. 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 Congrats. This will be fun. So. Sidewalk chalk. Yes, Marsha Reese. Okay, okay. so uh, Marsha, we, we've already got your information. Um, Kelsey just, well, actually, Paul, uh, Paul, do you have Marsha's information? Uh, I, I, I'm i connected with her on Facebook. Ah. So just, I, Kelsey, I, I just barely... send it over to Paul. We'll get yeah. this thing started. Marsha, enjoy. This is uh, it's going to be great value for you, especially knowing your product and your brand. All right. So, Mr. Barron, thank you, sir. Thank you. This has always it been was, a pleasure. It was great talking to you. Now, now, when you get to talk to my wife, you can be like, wow, she is so much smarter than him. <laughs> <laughs> Why did she marry him? <laughs>
<laughs> oh, you know what? It, what was funny though? I did get a message from Paul once uh, on my phone, and I'm going, "What the heck is he sending me?" And he, he's talking to me about how to feed chickens. Anyways, he, he just you know sent it to the wrong guy. <laughs> I don't know. Well, if you ever want to come down and feed my chickens, now you know how. Anytime, Paul. As long as I can get out of the country, I will. All right, Paul, thank you so much. Hey, everybody. I hope you enjoyed the podcast today. I think we have a really great topic with uh, the comment that Uzma made. And uh, see if I can get a panel together in the near future to talk about that. Because that is uh, very, um, very interesting how you can use psychology to build out and, and not only affect influencers, but posts and advertising. So we'll talk about that you know, uh, probably within the next month and a half or so. So Kelsey, what's up? All right. So first of all, congratulations, Marsha. Marsha, if you could just send me an email. Um, and I guess the best way to connect would just through email um, and just communicate it with Paul. But we'll, we'll figure that out later. But um, yeah, thank you everyone for listening. Uh, if you haven't yet, please hit that like button um, and subscribe to us on our YouTube channel. We're close to 800 subscribers on YouTube, so we really like to hit that uh, that milestone there. Um, we're on on our way to 1,000, um, so it's all very exciting. Um, and we have our AirPod contest. The easiest way to get to it, I'll put the link right now into the comment section. But you can also go to Norm's Instagram page, and it's in the bio there uh, if you're listening to this. Um, and let me see. I think that's pretty much it. Uh, thank you, everyone, for watching. We have uh, Shane Oglo coming up next You're episode. My... Kels. The my floor God. is yours. I only got a little bit to say. All right. So <laughs> Shane Oglo, he's the president of PR Reach. He's also a business partner of mine. Uh, he's going to be discussing something really cool. And it's uh, Amazon editorials we've all seen them he's going to discuss you know what it is how profitable it can be how to get them and uh, i think that's going to be a good one on friday um the other thing hey if you like the the information that you heard today don't forget that you can just leave us a review we're always you know we love reviews you can either leave that um, on our google my business uh, page or over on our Facebook um, page. So we love it if you would leave us a review. Um, anyway, join us every Monday, Wednesday, Friday at noon Eastern Standard Time. And thank you everybody for joining us. Thank you for helping us build this community and enjoy the rest of your day. Mantra, 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 mantra.